What's up YouTube? This is LDS Alliance. All right, we're back working on this uh, solar power generator. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, this box is tailor made uh, specifically for this size of battery. So I got that snugly in there. And uh, the first thing that we need to do to, to uh, create the uh, compartments inside is I've got a, a piece of scrap wood that was part of this piece of furniture I disassembled and we need to take some measurements and and cut this piece so that it'll slide right in here and go down about this deep to kind of prevent the battery from sliding around so that's the first thing i'll go ahead and measure that cut it and get that screwed in place glued and screwed in place Okay, so the next part that we need to do now that we've got our divider put in there, uh, and that's gonna be strong enough to just to keep the, the battery from moving around. We, it doesn't need to be uh, um, you know, permanent either, because if I wanna put a second battery in there like I talked about. Um, but we, we need to work on the electronics now. We need to figure out where they're gonna be mounted and what components we're gonna use. So I dug around in my parts bin and for this build, this is a, f a fairly, it's not high end, I wouldn't say, but it's not a cheapo battery either. It's a nice, uh, a nice battery. Um, and so we're going to, and, and the solar panel that we're using over here is, you know, this is a $300 semi flexible, lightweight, portable solar panel. So we're not using super cheap components in this build. So I, and I want this to be flexible enough that it can power a laptop or whatever. So that's why I chose this uh, Xantrex uh, inverter that I have. This is a 12 volt inverter, so I'm not currently using it on my, my solar system in my shed because that is 24 volt. So I had it laying around, it's a nice unit, um, and it is pure sine wave, which is going to allow us to power anything, absolutely anything we want with this thing. Obviously, we're limited to 600 watts on this particular model, uh, but you're not going to use a whole lot more than that in, a, in an emergency generator anyway with just one battery and so forth or even two batteries I guess. So that's the uh, we're, that's, that's what I chose to use and it's I already um, you know it mounts perfectly on the side here so it'll go something like this um, allowing some space for another battery if we choose to do that. <clears throat> so that's that's one piece we're going to use now. Having just said that I'm not going to use cheap components, you're probably wondering why I have this $10 Chinese charge controller. Um, the reason for that is, like I said, I am going to be experimenting with other types of battery technology. And so basically at this point, I don't want to order. I don't have another 12 volt um, char nice charge controller laying around that I'm not using at this point. So. Um, I, I, before I order one to use for this project, I, I'm going to use this as a placeholder. This will work with this flooded lead acid battery right there. Um, and it will just be a placeholder until I figure out what final battery style I'm going to use. And because, and so for example, if I use some sort of lithium uh, battery, I'm going to need a, a special charge controller that can, you know, that has the charging programs and so forth. And these little cheapo ones will not do that. So anyway, this is just a placeholder, and this you know is small enough it can be mounted pretty much anywhere. So I need to um, draw up where I want everything, where the uh, the receptacles are going to be, and those will just be those kind of um, little blue boxes that you use in home construction with a faceplate on it uh, on the outside, uh, just kind of a normal 110 volt receptacle. Okay, so after f thinking about this for a little bit uh, overnight, I, uh, I went and got a couple of these boxes. One will be for our uh, outlet receptacle, and one will be for a switch to be able to turn on and off the power um, from outside. So we need to figure out where on the outside that we're going to cut these holes for these uh, two boxes. <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and mount the inverter 
kind of right where it sits over there um, giving it a little bit of room on the front for the the three-pronged pigtail uh, that I that I bought and we'll worry about wiring later but I got to make room for that and then the, uh, the the positive and negative terminals are on the back here so they'll just go straight to the batteries and then the charge controller will just kind of be on the other side on this other wall on the inside um, this one you know we want to leave some room because whatever charge controller I end up with is almost for sure going to be bigger than that but um, we have more than enough room in here, more than we need really. So I think I'm going to put these boxes, you know, kind of maybe like, you know, one down here. And of course they go, they go on the inside, but um, kind of horizontally like that. So Okay, some of you probably saw this coming, but uh, I didn't think about it at the time. I bought these, uh, I accidentally bought these new work uh, electrical boxes, which means that, you know, when someone's building a house and the sheetrock is not on there, it's real easy to put these up next to a stud and then hammer them in. There's no problems. But <clears throat> these, uh, these nails and the way that they're positioned in this particular application, um, <clears throat> I can't, I can't get it to work. So basically, what I needed to do was get an old work box, which allows you to retrofit after the, you know, cut a hole and and mount it after the house is already built. So basically, that's that's what I've done. I've gotten a couple new boxes, same size, but they just go in here like this, and then you there's a little uh, flap that that comes up to uh, in the back to hold it in place so you just screw this down screw this down and you're done and then the the receptacle mounts in here so anyway <clears throat> uh, i'm going to cut the other hole down here and we'll go ahead and get those boxes mounted up and then get the inverter uh wired or mount nah, not wired but mounted and then the uh, charge controller is basically going to be on the back side over here Okay, we've got everything mounted now. Um, I've got both of the new work boxes in here. I don't have the plates on them, but I, I put in the switch and the receptacle just so you could see what it's going to kind of look like. There will be a plate over that. Uh, again, this I'm just using cheap uh, indoor rated stuff. This is not meant to be waterproof or weatherproof or all that rugged at this point, although that is an end goal for this project. Uh, eventually, uh, the final product will be more so but um <clears throat> and then we got the inverter installed mounted um, i hooked up the little pigtail here um, just so that i could make sure that i had enough space so i didn't you know so i could still unplug and plug in and unplug the wire and uh, so i didn't kink the wire too bad and then i actually decided to put the charge controller on the on the on the floor partially because there's no other use you know the real estate wasn't being used for anything else, but part of it was because if I put it over here, uh, it was going to be really hard to get my drill in to screw it into the side. So really, it was just uh, easier, um, excuse me, wiring, so I can get access to the wiring easily, more easily, and also so I could mount it more easily. But uh, again, sometime in the future, uh, this will be shrunk, so we'll shrink out all of the uh, excess space uh, if I were to ever you know manufacture these things for for lack of a better term um, you know th it would be more intelligently thought out <coughs> uh, use more appropriate materials and uh, you know 
anyway, so that, that it would be better. I, this is just a prototype. I wanted to, to get something thrown together, r very rough carpentry, all that kind of stuff. So this is where we're at today. Um, this, we're going to go ahead and end this video. And in step three, we'll go ahead and wire everything up and then uh, put a, like I said, some sort of a handle uh, pulling system on here with a pivot point so that kind of like a wheelbarrow, I mean, not a wheelbarrow, a uh, kind of like the little play wagons that you used to have when you were a kid. Some of us older folks, the little Red Rider uh, wagons. Anyway, something like that, just a pull handle uh, that, that extends up so you can pick this thing up and move it around on two wheels. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for, for the next installment.